Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this little pistol that you see in my hand right here and that you guys saw in the intro. Of course, this is the Canic TP9 DA, DA standing for double action. So with this uh, variant of the TP9 series, you have a double action pull for the first trigger pull, pull rather, and then a single action pull after that. So uh, this one I first saw at SHOT Show in 2017 and then I think they started shipping them out in May. So I got mine then. Been putting a ton of rounds through it since then. And uh, as you'd expect with the TP9 series, We've had a grand total of zero issues with any type of ammunition we put through it, um, which is certainly a good thing. But what we'll do next is let the dogs take a peek at it, and then uh, we'll get into the actual details of this particular pistol. In the box you'll find a few things with the pistol that are pretty cool especially for a new shooter that doesn't have a lot of this stuff so first off you get a mag loader you get two magazines these are 18 round magazines so that gives you a total capacity of 19 rounds with 18 in, in the mag and one in the chamber uh, those are made by Metgar, so that's always a good thing very very good high quality magazines you get a uh, brush and a rod for cleaning the pistol and you also get a couple back straps i have the larger one on there and to change it's very simple you just drive this little roll pin out in the back and swap it out you also get the holster that you see here so we'll sort of move this off to the side and uh, focus on that so the holster has a retention system here which is this little strap um, you can pop it off you can actually take that completely off uh, if you want to that would be what I personally did if I was going to actually use the holster. Um, so you take that off. And then at this point, there's a little button that you see here. And in the last Canic review I did, I was corrected by you guys correctly. So I said that that was a button that you had to press to release the pistol. That's not actually true. What it is, is it's a little spring loaded device that gives some tension on the holster. Um, so basically at this point, you just need to pull it and you can see if I'm pulling it a little bit and it's not coming out, but if you give it a nice sharp tug, it will come right out. So this holster here is designed for outside the waistband carry and you can either use the belt loops here or use it like a traditional paddle style holster. So not a super awesome holster, but the fact that it's included with the gun is certainly a good thing. The grip of the pistol has a pretty good texture overall in my opinion. So it has this sort of stipple design here on the side and then on the back strap and on the front strap, it has these little square pattern on there. And what that does is sort of uh, kind of feels like a Gen 4 Glock for those that are familiar with that. It gives you a little bit of traction on the gun as it's recoiling. So if the gun is recoiling and it's kind of sticking to your fingers a little bit. Obviously we have no finger grooves, which I know a lot of people like. The magwall has a slight bevel to it, which I do like as well, aids in uh, reloads. And then of course, like we talked about, interchangeable back straps to uh, fit it to your hand. So all in all, definitely can't complain about that. The controls on the pistol are pretty basic, which I like. It's very simple. We have our magazine release here, which has good checkering on it. It doesn't stick out too much. I've never accidentally bumped it, which is a good thing. But from a typical uh, shooting grip, it's very easy to actuate with your thumb. It is not ambidextrous. However, it is reversible for those that would like to do that. Then we have our slide lock and slide release here. Uh, again, it doesn't stick out too far, which I do like. Some of the earlier canics, they protruded a little bit more, and I was always hitting it with my thumb causing the slide not to lock back, but easy to lock the slide back, but it still has enough there to hit it and send it back home into battery. And of course, the last control that's on the pistol is this little piece right here, which is our decocker. Uh, so I suppose we'll get into that now while we're at it. It's a striker fire gun, although it is double action, single action, which traditionally has a hammer, this one is striker fired. So that's the striker indicator there on the back, that little red thing. This is letting you know that the striker is to the rear and you're in single action mode. If you want to Go back to double action mode you're just going to press this little decocker here on the top of the slide and you'll see it'll go home at that point you're going to be into double action with your first shot that trigger of course is primarily what sets this apart from the other tp9 series so we'll check it out here real quick in double action mode which you know because the striker indicator is not to the rear uh, we have a little bit of take up here just right there and then at this point it's pretty steady smooth all the way through and breaks right towards the rear which i do like personally and there you go it's a it's a clean break, it's easy to shoot well, and then you're gonna come out, very short reset, and the single action 
very crisp as well right towards the rear which i again do like it prevents over travel that's why i like it some folks don't like it to break all the way to the rear i guess it's personal preference at that point but on the uh, trigger gauge here on the pull gauge you can see we're breaking just over eight pounds on the uh, scale in double action and then of course the subsequent single action shots are going to be a little bit lighter than that And there you go, just over six pounds on that one if my camera will actually focus. So um, the difference in terms of weight isn't huge. It's really just the length of pull. That's the big difference. Again, very short there in single action. Then double action, you got that pressure the whole way through. Since you just saw me dry firing, it goes without saying that it does fire without the uh, magazine inserted, but that is good. It does not have a magazine disconnect, which I personally prefer. Um, moving forward again, you can see on the frame there, we do have 1913 spec rails. So anything you want to mount on there, lights, lasers, things like that will mount just fine. I do also like that it has a nice large trigger guard there. I don't find my trigger finger ever rubbing on it, which does happen with some pistols for me anyway. Uh, the slide itself, of course, is Cerakoted just like the frame. You're gonna see some wear on here. That's honest wear just from use that we've been doing, getting it ready for this review and putting some rounds through it. But even under that, it is nitrocarburized. So uh, while the finish looks wear, it does still have the corrosion pre protection underneath there uh, for rust and stuff like that, uh, even if the finish is actually worn off. The sights that the pistol ships with are steel, three-dot sights. There's nothing fancy about them, but there's nothing bad about them either. They certainly work, and unlike some uh, competitive options out there that ship with plastic sights, uh, you don't have to worry about them ripping off. And one nice thing about the Canic pistols that I can say now in 2017 that I couldn't say uh, when I reviewed them a couple years ago is that aftermarket stuff is available for them in a pretty good supply. So we put the uh, XS big dot sights on there. These ones have the tritium in the rear and uh, of course in the front, the big dot to draw you right into the front sight when you're shooting. And uh, again, there's definitely other sights out there besides those, but that's just the one we chose to go with for this pistol. I like them. It's a very quick uh, presentation. Uh, once you get used to them, there is a little bit of a learning curve, but at this point I've been shooting them for long enough that I do like them and I don't, they don't slow me down at all. Speaking of aftermarket support, there are aftermarket holsters available for these and I'm sure someone was going to ask if I didn't point it out so this holster that I've been using is by uh, Smoky Mountain Concealment and it's designed for the uh, TLR1 outside the waistband but there's several other holster makers of course that are making them these ones are good to go I have a couple of them and it works well locks in place nicely as you guys saw there and of course draws out nicely as well disassembly of the pistol is pretty easy so you're going to drop the magazine of course if you have it in there lock the slide to the rear uh, make sure that it is unloaded which it certainly is in this case and at this point you have a couple options uh, you can send the slide home and uh, you can pull the trigger or of course you can just decock it which is one thing a lot of people like with this one you do not have to pull the trigger to disassemble it so we're going to hit the decocker and then just kind of pull back on the slide about an eighth of an inch uh, send it home when pulling down on these two tabs here on each side of the pistol and we'll pull the barrel and recoil assembly out. It is steel, which I know is something that a lot of people there do like. And the barrel itself is a Cold Hammer Forge match grade barrel. I didn't do any accuracy testing for this particular video because I've kind of done it with probably three or four canics in the past and the TP9 series and all of them shoot well. They, with good ammo, will give you two inch groups at 25 yards. So you really can't complain about that. And I'm not sure what the specs are. If I, if I can find it, I will annotate it below, but I know they guarantee accuracy with all their pistols, which is uh, also a good thing as well. But on the inside, pretty standard uh, looking affair for a double action, single action striker gun. So we have our striker here in the rear the spring that sets it back and then we have the uh, firing pin or rather in this case striker disconnect safety so that way it won't fire when you drop it and uh, frame pretty standard as well and uh, it's just very easy to take apart put back together and clean so that certainly is a good thing we're going to do a quick history of how this pistol came to be uh, basically a few years ago uh, Kinnick imported their first TP9, which was a licensed clone of the Walther pistol, of course, and it had the decocker on top. A lot of people like that, uh, just like they do with this pistol, but a lot of American shooters wanted just a sort of single action striker fired trigger. Uh, that led to this pistol coming in, which is the Kinnick TP9 SA single action. And uh, as you guys can see there, the striker is to the rear, so it's ready to fire. Um, but it also had the decocker that the original pistol had as well. So if you decocked it like so, at this point, the trigger would be dead. A lot of American shooters didn't like that because they thought they could accidentally uh, decock the, the decocker on there and it would render your pistol uh, useless until you rack the slide like so. And then you could, of course, fire the gun. Now, 
I've never actually heard of that actually happening in real life of anyone accidentally doing it, but in theory it could happen. So they made the second generation of the TP9DA, which basically had the exact same decocker on here. Again, some of the customer feedback said that they thought that this decocker was just too large. Um, and basically that's how we got to this small decocker over here and the sort of trimmed down frame and profile that you see here. So they have other pistols, of course, in the Canic lineup. Uh, this one here is the SF version that doesn't have any decocker. And uh, this one here went through a thousand round torture test on the channel. If you guys haven't seen it, it's relatively entertaining to watch me uh, struggle to shoot a thousand rounds, but it did quite well, of course, and uh, is still going strong to this day. Um, also, Canic recently introduced their uh, TP9 SFX, which this one here is an optics ready pistol, of course, and um, it also has fiber optic sight, longer slide, all that stuff. But you can see here the frame is very similar overall. So that's definitely a grip that a lot of folks seem to like. But in terms of comparing it to America's Baby, which of course is the Glock 19, we're going to do a quick size comparison so you guys can get an idea of that here, real quick. Behind the backs of the slides up, you'll see the DA is just a touch longer there. And then also, it's a little bit longer in the frame, which you would expect given that you get uh, three more rounds in the Canic frame. Lately, when I review a Canic pistol, the comment section is full of uh, political discussion and dialogue. So I just want to address that here real quick. Um, these pistols are made in Turkey. Right now, Turkey's ruler is a man named Erdogan. And uh, of course, it's an Islamic uh, nation. So um, he's done some things that really a lot of people in America, particularly pro-Second Amendment folks, don't like. And I get that. Um, I generally agree with most of what you're saying there as well. Um, but on this channel, I don't really do politics outside of pro-Second Amendment stuff. If somebody's attacking our rights, if we're trying to get our rights restored to where they should be, those are the really only political issues I really discuss on the channel. So I try to leave all that aside. Like, for instance, I just did a Gen 5 uh, Glock 17 video, the pistols made in Austria. I did not discuss, discuss rather, um, the the horrible things that Austria did in the past. I try to leave all that aside and focus just on the guns. So that's what we're doing here as well. So with that in mind, I mentioned earlier the price point of this gun being relatively attractive. And I think the MSRP on this is like $425. But I looked around online today and found this, for instance, at Sportsman's Guide uh, for $360 shipped, I believe. So that is a ton of value for a uh, a gun that at this point has really developed a very good reputation for reliability and accuracy. So um, these TP9 pistols, go look around forums and on different places on the internet and you'll see a lot of people with a lot of positive things to say about them. I kind of agree. You get, of course, two Mechgar mags, 19 round capacity total, um, usable sights. So you get good ergonomics, a very good trigger. Um, you get a holster that, again, may or may not be the best, but it certainly works and you get it included with that price point. And you get some gun, gun cleaning supplies as well. So for shoot 360 or even $400 out the door, that is a very attractive pistol, uh, particularly compared to what a lot of its competitors are coming in priced at. So um, really, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any comments about this pistol that we didn't discuss here today, you can always post down below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh!